What's up gamers, it's Old School Fool, and once again, we have another exclusive unboxing of another classic product. Now you guys are probably wondering, well we did, you know, the RetroGen, and the Sega Portable, and the Firebox. One was, you know, a portable system for the Genesis player, the other one was a, just a built-in handheld with, you know, 20 plus games, and of course the other one was a console system. But now we have something exclusively different here, and it's the new F-16 GO! Portable Super Nintendo, yes. First portable Genesis, and of course, you can't have the rivalry continue without a portable Super Nintendo. The FC-16 GO is technically a, another product brought out to by the makers of the original FC Twin, which is Yobo Gameware. Yobo Gameware is producing this in three wonderful flavors, and that includes silver, charcoal, and red. Yes, sexy red, and today, that sexy red will be doing unboxing, and then of course, we're gonna see what it's all about. Because you guys wanna know how it works, I wanna know how it works, and whether or not we should be playing it so that it actually works. All right, so let's take a look, unbox it, and that's what you get. You get a big, huge unit that looks like a brick. Literally a DS-esque type of unit with some, looks like here, big speakers areas. Or maybe it's breathing holes. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it needs to breathe. But um, here you go. There it is. Two controllers, unit, power supply, battery, TV out jacks, and of course, some free cheap Chinese headphones. Yeah. Right, so let's take a look a little closer at the FC16 Go. Once I unboxed it, as you can see, there are two controllers, one wireless, one wireless, AC adapter, internal ba rechargeable battery, some cheap Chinese headphones, and of course, the the jack out to the TV set with one video connection and one audio connection. So it's not stereo. As I unfold the unit, you'll see that it kind of looks like I said a pseudo huge DS, three times the size, with nice big areas for um, for speakers. But there is no speakers there; just one big speaker right there. We have a select, on and off, aka power button, and a start to start the game. We have a reset switch. Uh, to my knowledge, the reset switch doesn't reset. Actually, it actually just powers it down. Kind of weird, but you can, I guess, you can call it a real hard reset. Um, as we close the unit and we turn it around, you'll notice on the side there's a volume switch, okay, and there's an LCD and TV switch that will connect. If you're going out, you're gonna have to connect it to TV. If you do LCD, see the monitor that's in here, the 3.5 inch, that's what you have to go. As we continue to turn it, there is a left and right shoulder buttons, just like on the original Super Nintendo pads. The, the actual uh, TV jack out is right there, and the power is right there. Now I've been told actually, Yobo uh, essentially told us that they're gonna be coming out with an, another model where uh, the buttons are actually gonna be bigger, the L and R's, and they're actually gonna switch the power down to the bottom. Here is the cartridge port area where you snap in your lovely 16-bit goodness. Okay. And there's the front. These are just two power lights, LED indicators for the, the wireless remotes and to make sure the unit's on. So let's, real quick, open it up using a nice micro precision screwdriver. Slapping this rechargeable battery. Pretty simple. All you gotta do is make sure you put it right there, line it up. Alright gamers, so let's see this thing in action, FC-16 GO with some cartridges inside, shall we? Alright, so you're going to take this, I'm going to take Super Mario World and slap it in. No, you just don't want to slap it in because I'm going to kind of be nice about it, but we're going to push it in nice and firm. Oh yes, I said nice and firm. And we'll open it to just about there. And bam. Now this thing is actually, uh, a lot of people have been asking about the uh, sound quality on a lot of these handheld systems. Uh, this system in particular, I'm gonna say is pretty banging. As you can see, it's the sound quality is pretty uh, replicated nicely, and um, the screen is pretty bright. It's full size, 
So far, no complaints. And the directional pads are pretty firm. I actually like the way the directionals feel. I was pretty confident. And now you can lower this or raise it. There is a headphone input, so you can put the headphones in if you just want to listen on your own. But for one speaker, it's pretty diesel. Supposedly, they're going to replace the speakers in the corners, but we don't know yet. But yeah, for one speaker, definitely really nicely done. We'll take some other examples real quick, too, to show you guys. Oh. Okay. So let's just try another game. Like I said, reset before it actually doesn't reset. It kind of just shuts it off. Really weird why it says reset, but what can you do? Let's take it out. Try another title. Street Fighter 2. The original gangster Street Fighter. And there you have it. Now, I noticed when I played Street Fighter that you kind of, you know, get excited and use the shoulder buttons. Now, personally, I actually knocked it to the side of the cartridge while trying to hit the shoulder buttons, and it it actually blacked out the game. So if you get too crazy with the cartridge, like as intense as I do playing Street Fighter, you will knock the game out of place, and it will not play. Okay, as you can see, the... the these are the fiercest, so and you can set that. But these, as they are kind of small, they are somewhat resilient, but I did feel them stick a few times. So I was a, just a little disappointed with the shoulder buttons. But right now, the sound quality, definitely there. Definitely on point. I also noticed in this particular game, I didn't see in a few of the other ones, but this actually doesn't utilize the entire LCD screen. It's like 3. Point, I don't know, 3.4 inches right there. You know, instead of 3.5. But the screen is nice and the screen is solid, and that's what counts. Directions feel good, everything is mapped correctly, and the sound is great. I mean, honestly, this, you could fill the room with the sound. Okay, so we'll put the cartridge in, we'll start with the Street Fighter 2 again, put it in firmly, press the button, and there you have it. So, full screen. I can actually close the cover. Put the cover, put this unit down, just have like that, you'll see the two little blinking lights. I'll use one of the wireless controls. It comes kind of light, but uh, it feels pretty solid. So let's see if I can uh, pull off some moves here. Sound. Even though this is only one audio channel, it definitely sounds clear and clean for Super Nintendo. Easily pulling off specials. No problem with quarter circles, no problem with half circles, quarter backs. These trigger buttons definitely better than the ones on the unit right now. I think we might have a winner here with regards to controls. gentle about it because you still don't want the cartridge to snap out of place. Sounds great to me. If you already pressed start on the first one, the other control will only make it be second. The color's a little bit washed, slightly, nothing really that bad. Sound is definitely a big plus for me.
All right, gamers, so that's the FC-16 Go. And I think I actually I might just go pick myself up one because it's actually not a bad system. So far, obviously, I have not tried every last game for the Super Nintendo library. However, I'm actually fairly impressed. And everybody here playing with me was fairly impressed as well. So it sounds good. It's, uh, it's kind of sleek. It's kind of big, you know, but uh, definitely does the job. So Classic Gamers, definitely check this out. Go to YouTube forward slash doshreviews.com to check out all the new cool stuff like the FC16 Go. And don't forget to check uh, for the future for links in the description video on where you can purchase the FC16 Go.